Well, hi everybody, I'm Don Smith, and today we're gonna to talk about calibrating your monitor. I know the topic of monitor calibration can seem overwhelming to some people. I've been teaching workshops professionally for 14 years, and any time we broach the subject of monitor calibration, we kind of see our participants go into that deer in the headlight look. I, I'm sure you know what I mean the first time you've ever thought about calibrating your monitor. But before I go about showing you how to calibrate a monitor, and it's really simple, I want to explain why we should calibrate a monitor. I just got a new computer the other day. This is the brand new iMac Pro and I just spent a couple of days getting it all set up and set the way I wanted. And I've actually gone ahead and calibrated it, but I'm going to show you the steps that I went through how to do that. So why is it important, number one, to calibrate your monitor? Well, really there's a couple of reasons, but the number one reason I think that all of you would want to calibrate your monitor is when it comes time to doing prints. Now, the number one complaint that I hear at workshops is, Don, when I go to print, either through a home printer like an Epson or a Canon, whatever you might be using, or I use an online service such as I do, I use babephoto.com, my prints come back too dark. And probably 99% of you are out there going, yeah, yeah, that's true. I've never once can recall a time in a workshop where I've had a person tell me, hey, Don, my prints come back too bright. What am I doing wrong? It's always that they're too dark. And the reason that they're too dark is that these machines right out of the box need calibration. As far as us as photographers go and working on our images, these computers are about on average a stop and a half to two stops too bright. Moreover, I work on a Apple computer and I've been with Apple for basically the inception of Apple. And I can talk about Apple's and far as their color, they're too blue in my opinion, right out of the box. I've heard other people on the PC side say the same thing. I've heard certain monitors are too warm. Regardless, we are going to correct the brightness, which we call Luma. That's what uh, calibration is going to help you. And we're also going to get these colors in line. So when you have a monitor tag, and we're going to show you how that happens at the end of the whole sequence here, it will talk to whatever printer you are working with. And the strings of ones and zeros can communicate to the printer's ones and zeros so they know what tones and what colors we are sending them, where our white point, most importantly, and where our black point is, which we call D-Max on a print. So, how do we go about calibrating a monitor? Well, first of all, you're going to need to buy a little device like this. And this is the uh, X-Rite i1 Display Pro. Costs about $150. You can go to my website, go to Discounts and Affiliations, hop on over to B&H, uh, you could order it and have it within a day or two. And really, if you're on Apple, this is the guy you want. I used to be with Spider for quite a number of years. And I just never really had the luck as far as getting my prints the way I thought they should have looked from a luminance value. That's the brightness value. i1 Display Pro in the auto mode that I'm going to show you cleared that up. And I have been with... X right now using their products for about the last four or five years. They also make a little, um, uh, this is called a color eye meter, and they make one called the Color Monkey. So there's a lot of different color eye meters out on the market. You just need to get yourself one. So the first thing we do is when we get this, we just plug it in. This has a USB port on the back. And you can see on the screen here, I've gone to the X-Rite page, and I've downloaded the latest uh, driver for this software for uh, Mojave, which is the latest software on the Apple. And, and it's good to go back every once in a while and check to see if there is an update, because especially after you change system software, be it if you're on a PC or a Mac, 
it's good to go back and check on that. And I have a few little buttons over here, and today we're just going to click on the top one that this says Display Profiling. Now you see a color chart comes up. This is a gamut, what we call a gamut chart. And there's a couple of buttons that I want to show you right in this area that are really, really important. The first one is, it, it, you can see it has my little Mac. It's called the iMac. I'm just going to leave this at generic. They give me different options in here. I'll get the fold down window again. Uh, I've gone through a lot of them and run tests and I've just found that generic tends to work best, especially for Macs. I can't again tell you about PCs. You're going to have to do a little bit of testing or jump onto XWrite's page and uh, I'm sure they'll have something there. The next one, white point, this is very important. You want to go with D65. So right now this opened up at D55. I want to change that into D65. That is industry standard. That comes recommended right from XWrite. So D65, it's going to look right on the mark. The last one here is luminance. And you get a couple of options. Well, you get more than a couple. But the two that really you want to look at is 100 or 120. And this is a little formula, CD slash M squared. So anybody out there knows that formula, you can tell me because I've forgotten what it stands for. Um, I can tell you on my iMacs, I leave it at 100. It looks really good. On my MacBook Pro, my laptop, I have gone to 120 on it. The difference is really minimal, but, uh, you know, again, run your own tests. So once we have that all complete, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit a button that says Start Measurement. And it's, you're going to see now my little color eye meter is starting to flash and up on my screen has a little chart that says take the little diffusion dome and rotate it. Now, on the back of this cord, it will come with a counterweight because we are actually going to drape this cord over the back of the computer and you can see the little computer right here. It gives you the marking. And the key on this is you want this color eye meter to sit flat against the screen. So if it's on an angle, that's not good. You want it flat against the screen. And I'm going to click OK. I've got that set up. And we're going to click the Next button. And now it's going to go ahead and run through I believe it's about 175 to 200 different color patches and it's going to map out each one of these color patches for you. And when it's done, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I've already created a tag. It'll create a color uh, calibration tag. It'll know what folder to store it in for your system. You don't even have to worry about that. All it'll ask you to do is name it. For XWrite, by default, it comes up with the date. And I just did this the other day, January 2nd, so I left it alone at January 2nd, 2019. You could name it whatever you want. The reason I do that is because I set a reminder for every two months to go back and recalibrate my screens again. Screens can drift. Colors can drift. Tones can drift. And, you know, our visual system is uh, very adaptive. We can look at a screen and we can think, yeah, that looks great. And we have no reference point. So when this, um, I'm going to click past this, actually. That's just asking me to set uh, a white point. But in computers such as the Mac, where I can't get in and physically set this as the software is going, I'm glad that popped up. Um, you would just click Next. And that actually is coming right from XWrite. I checked with them on that. Um, so again, this tag, just leave it dated. This whole process takes maybe 10 minutes. Now, a couple of keys. When you are running um, the, the system here, the, the software, and allowing it to do its thing, I've got a softbox with a light on me. I would not normally be putting that on that screen, but I needed to light myself up for this video. You want to set your work environment consistent. I have blinds that I close every time I come into this office. I have recessed lighting in the ceiling on a dimmer switch. That is set the same. So I can walk in at any time, 10 in the morning on a sunny day, 10 at night, and I'm going to get pretty much the same 
work environment. So that's, that's crucial. And when you're calibrating your monitor and running this software, go ahead and uh, make sure your work environment is the same consistency as what you work in. And that, that will really, really help you. So that's it. That's how simple it is. It's telling me down here it's processing patch 64 of 118. We got a ways to go. I'm not going to make you wait to the end. I just want to show you how actually simple it is. If you're having problems with your prints coming back too light, too dark, <laughs> probably won't be too light, but I know it'll be too dark. The color's not looking quite right. It's time to calibrate. Quit trying to make the changes before you send it out to your printer. That just gets to be a whole nother step you don't need to be going through. So that's it. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them below. Uh, would love it if you hit the like button if you like this material and hit the subscribe button. And until next time, this is Don Smith. Take care.